Yedsid Organist here. And Stitch Fun. And welcome back to Stitch and Yedsid Learn Redstone. So last time we did a couple of Mumbo's challenges. And in doing that video and in watching back and doing the editing, I realized that I have a fairly basic understanding of some very basic redstone circuits and how some things um, work that I've acquired over years of watching, you know, Let's Plays and Redstone tutorials and, e and even playing around with it a little bit in Minecraft that I realized you probably don't have. And so what I wanted to do to start this video off is I wanted to go through um, and um, I explain a few things um, that I just kind of instinctively know and that I think will be very helpful for you going forward. Okay? Okay. Okay. So one of the first things that, um, and this is something that I just learned, but it was relevant to last week, and I want to give a huge shout-out to Michael Bush, who explained all a lot of things to me in the comments on the last video. There is a difference between hard-powered blocks and soft-powered blocks, and this was something that I did not know um, or at least maybe I'd heard of it, but I didn't really know what it meant. Because we were looking at how, we were looking at block powering at the very end of the last video. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, with hard power, this is when you power a block directly. So you have a repeater, you have a lever, you have a button, you have some kind of direct input. And so when you flip that, it powers everything that is attached to the block and the redstone line. There's a note block on the back, Okay. So soft-powered is when you run redstone into a block. And so it powers everything in that block, but it does not power a redstone line coming out. So as you can see, we got the light, we got the piston, the note block went off. But if you look at this redstone dust over here, it's not powered. Okay? So that's the difference between those two. I think that will probably be useful to remember going forward. Okay. So... From there, we um, redstone uses a lot of what's called um, logic, um, and these are basically different kinds of circuits that you can have that do different things. So this is what's called an AND gate, and this requires two or more inputs to both be turned on in order to get a redstone output. Okay, so if you turn one on, it turns off. You have both of them off, and it's then everything's off. You have to have both of them turned on. So how that works is we have a torch that's coming out of this block here. When, um, and then we have a redstone output from there. So these are both these levers are on. So if we turn both of them off, the torches on top are powered. The redstone line in between is powered, which turns this torch off. Does that make sense? Okay, because when you power a block that a redstone torch is on, it turns that torch off. Kind of like the torch tower you were working with last week. Mm. Okay, so when you turn one of these on, it turns, we power this block, it turns this torch off. Mm -hmm. Right? But this torch is still on, which means this redstone line still has power, which means our torch out the back is still unpowered. Mm -hmm. When you power this, then it turns both of these off. Now there's no redstone power to this line because both these torches are off, which means this torch can turn on, which can power um, the line coming out. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's when you have two inputs um, and you need both of them. Okay? Okay. Very similar to that is an OR gate. So we have a similar setup. We have a redstone torch coming out the back into a line, and apparently both of these are off. I guess you can run this one one of two ways. Um, I just have this inverted right now. So if you turn one of these on, it powers this entire line, which turns the torch off, and now we have nothing coming out. If I turn the other one on, nothing happens. Okay. okay? But if I turn this one on, it also turns this off. So either of these inputs can be used to toggle the signal, the redstone signal, on or off. So you can have one, you can have both, or you can have the other. Make sense? Yeah. 
And if you wanted to just power this, you could actually take this torch out, and you could do it like this. So now it's it just turns on. Turns on from there. That one, I can turn that one off. It's still on. That one turns on. That one turns on. Both of them turn on. Mm. With me so far? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me know. Let me know when it gets overwhelming. I have a whole bunch of things here. <laughs> this is what is called an RS Norlatch. I should point out, by the way, that there are lots of different ways to do these. I'm just doing like the most basic ones that I know. I, 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 at one point I learned what RS stands for. I don't think it's redstone. <laughs> um, but this lets you um, basically have a system that flips when you push different buttons. So this block right here has a redstone torch coming out of it, which has power that comes into this block, which turns this torch off. Right? Uh -huh. Okay. When I push this button... It's going to power the block underneath it, which will turn this torch off. When there's no longer power into this block, it will turn this back on. Okay? Now, if I push this button, it does nothing. Because this block is already powered turning this torch off. If I press this button, now it flips it. Hmm. So what this is useful for is having... Um, a system that you would have two different inputs that you'd want to use. For instance, if you had a door that you wanted to be able to open from one side and then have it close behind you and then open it again once you're inside, you could use one of these circuits to do that. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This would be good for the door um, in your survival world. Mm -hmm. We were looking at that and how to do it. We, we had a very complicated line. To make that work, and it actually there was a there's a simpler way to do it, so that's what how that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, we have a T flip flop. So if you have a button and you have an output, you get that while the button is activated, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you want to push a button and get something to stay on? That's where we come into a T flip-flop. So if I push this button, the lamp turns on. If I push it again, it turns off. Okay? So what we have here, we have four droppers. So this dropper here is facing... Let's see here. i got to think about how to do this. I think this the dropper there faces this way and goes into this dropper here that is facing up. Then, over here, you have... Um, if I can place it... You have a dropper facing down, and then you have a hopper facing into this dropper. So now, when you have a button on here, you put an item in here. When you push the button... It goes, let's see, where does it go? Um, it goes over here. So it goes into the top one. So what happens when you push that button, it gets pushed into this dropper in the back, which is then pushed up into the hopper, and then comes into the top, and it sits there. When you push it again, it gets, dis it gets moved from the dropper on top into the dropper in the bottom. I don't really understand how it goes from here to here and gets pushed up here. Um, I guess because this backdropper is powered. So if you watch that backdropper and you push the button, you'll see it go through there really quickly. Right? I don't know. Maybe. Or not, because it goes through so fast. What happens if you watch the hopper? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do see it pop up in that hopper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then what you do is you take a comparator signal, or a comparator from, out of, from one of those, mm -hmm. and then when there's an item in there, you get the signal, which then powers that. Mm. Now there's no item in this top dropper, um, and so it's not powered. 
Okay. So that's useful for being able to have a um, a button that has a um, kind of like a lever input almost. You push it once and you get an on. You push it again and you get an off. Okay. Okay. This is what we were doing last week was this uh, monostable circuit where you push the button and you get a little light um, coming from there. And again, thank you to Michael on this one because I didn't get the difference between a rising edge and falling edge. I mean, I knew what they were. I wasn't sure how to make one of them. So this is a rising edge. So when you activate it, you get the, you get the, um, the output on the activation. All you have to do to get it um, when it deactivates is put a torch in there and invert the line, invert the redstone line, so that when you turn it back on, it powers when it comes off. Or if we did this with a lever, uh, if I can find a lever, pull the lever. <laughs> when you turn the lever off, you get it on the off as opposed to over here as where you get it when it's turning on. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's going to be useful. Last but not least, we have the Etho Hopper Clock. Mm. Um, so this is a clock that lets you have a redstone output at certain times. Mm. And then it goes back and forth. I don't think we need this today. Um... But basically what you do is you have items that travel back and forth between the two hoppers here. Mm -hmm. And then these uh, sticky pistons on top push the redstone block back and forth. When the redstone block is on top of the hopper, it stops things from flowing out. So if you, if you click on one of the hoppers, you can see the items flow in. When the items get in, the redstone gets pushed to the other side and the blocks go through. Right? And then, if you come to the back, if you take a comparator output from the redstone block, you can get power to the torch to turn the lamp on and off. And then if you just directly power one of the hoppers, you can turn the whole system off. Okay? Okay. All right. Um, this is probably the most complicated thing we've looked at so far. Um, and there are other ways of doing clocks. But we'll get into that later. So, I think that's going to do for circuits. Is there anything you don't understand so far? Mm. I don't understand this one that well. The falling edge yeah. monostable circuit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you understand the rising edge one? Kind of. Okay. Thanks. So, what we have here is we have redstone line that powers this block. Mm -hmm. When this block... Whoops. <laughs> I forgot I was in creative. When this block is powered, mm -hmm. you can get a repeater output, um, which basically just boosts the signal from the block, lighting the lamp. Okay. Okay? So when you activate this line, in the instant it takes for this um, piston to extend... The redstone power flows through the block into the repeater, lighting the lamp. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So over here, this basically is just the inverse. So this is powered to begin with. Okay. We turn it off and the piston retracts. Mm -hmm. Or well, we turn it on and the piston retracts, actually. Um, when, we, when we turn this off, this torch will become active. This red line or this redstone will become powered. Will power the block. Will power the repeater in the instant before the piston extends. Okay. And that's where you get that. So essentially, the rising edge that we have over here gives you an output when you turn the thing on, okay. and only when you turn it on. The falling edge gives you a gives you an output when you turn it off and only when you turn it off. Okay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Challenge time. So, the challenge this week, and this is from the same Mumbo video that we did, we were using for the challenges last week. I'm taking these a little bit out of order on purpose. Um, 
So this is actually the fourth challenge in that video. So the challenge is power this piston to push these blocks over here. Once they get over here, have this piston push them back. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I should, I should... Lever on is push them that way. Okay. Whee! Lever off is push them that way. Okay? Okay? On your architect, go. Okay, so you're on the right track with this. Mm -hmm. What's happening, though, is... Um, let's see, this is on, right? Okay. So what happens is when you turn this on, mm -hmm. this um, piston is still powered, and pistons cannot push um, powered pistons. Mm -hmm. So when this turns on, it's going to be powered instantly, while this thing is still powered, because this is powered, this won't be able to push. And even when this retracts, which it will do um, when you turn it off, even though this is powered, it's missed its push, basically. Okay? So you have the right idea with this. Um, you do need an inverted signal, but you need, you need a little bit more than what you have. Think about the circuits we talked about at the beginning of the video. All right, so we have got our things working. So I just took the um, the um, simple approach of a couple of different monostable circuits. So when you turn it on, that one pushes, and when you turn it off, that one pushes. P pushes? Pushes. Over here, Stitch did something very, very similar. Um, the only difference here is she did not use the monostable circuit for the first push, which you don't need. Um, so, yeah. Makes me wonder, you could probably, um, it's not going to work if you're spamming it because your gravity block doesn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me wonder if you could, if you could get away with, um, only needing one monostable circuit. So actually, let me test that. Because now I'm kind of curious. If I put the delay in there, does that work? It does. So you had the falling edge, which was the the push when you turn it off, and I had both of them, but if you do a rising edge, but you put a little bit of delay on the repeater, um, you can actually do it the other way. So, a couple of different ways, several different ways that you can do that, and that's, that's kind of one of the cool things about redstone, is um, there, there's often lots of different ways, where did you go? There you are, <laughs> to do things. So, cool. So I think that's going to do it for this episode today. Hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm curious if there's any way to simplify this, and I'm also wondering, um, I think when Mumbo did his video, uh, observers were not a thing yet, and so I'm wondering if there's like any way with observers to simplify this circuit. So if you guys have any input um, about things that would compact this a little bit more or make this a little bit more efficient, I would love to hear that as well. Definitely in, um, appreciate your input on that. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you real soon.